How are we enjoying our day so far in this glorious London day? It's great, it's beautiful. I love being here. Yeah, how about, did you ask about London? Yeah, what's up? How, how are you enjoying the day so far? The day? The day is great. Yeah, yesterday was great. I mean, it's my first time in London, so uh, I'm enjoying it. All of it. It's amazing, yeah. And how long are you guys here for? Are you here for a little while, or are you straight back to work as soon as you can? Well, it's, yeah, not back to work yet, but we, yeah, we're only here until Monday. Monday morning, and they're like, get out. Yeah. So just after the jet lag is cleared, just ready for it to kick in again. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so before we kind of talk about the, the Mandalorian, as obviously that's what we're here for, how did you both kind of get into acting to start with? Is it something you always wanted to do? Or? Go on, go on. Uh, I, I wanted to for the longest time, and as a kid I was always... My grandma had a bunch of, you know, furs and old people stuff, and so I was always trying her stuff on and acting out scenes, and my brother and I would pretend that we were like, I don't know, in Greek myths and stuff. Um, but I never thought it was a realistic career, and uh, I did the whole college thing. I studied psychology and German and a couple other things, and uh, became a police officer even, and then after that I was like, all right, I want to actually act. <laughs> I want to do the thing that doesn't pay the bills. And now I'm here, which is crazy. Did you do any training, or did you start auditioning and kind of... I, did, I mean, I, I took classes when I was young, and then uh, I found a class uh, after college uh, that was geared towards film acting. Uh, and I kind of learned how that worked, and got an agent and manager, and moved to Los Angeles, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was an advertising major in college, and uh, they make you take these uh, arts classes for non-majors, and I can't draw, I can't play music, and so I, you know, took acting for non-majors, and I kind of caught the bug. It's very therapeutic for me, uh, and so I started working pretty much after college, and that was like 20 years ago. So yeah, I'm very lucky that we get to do what we do. So moving on to the Mandalorian, then I'm guessing that. You know, when you auditioned for the part, if you auditioned for the part, it was all very quiet and you weren't told what it was for. And then, and then, when could you tell people that you that you got the part? I, yeah, they didn't tell me what I was auditioning for at all. And when I booked it, they said, "Congratulations, you booked something." And I didn't know what I had booked until I walked into the wardrobe fitting and saw an imperial uniform, and I was like, "Oh, I'm a bad guy. Cool." Cool, cool. That's the only way that I knew. And then I uh, didn't have a character name. I was supposed to be in like one or two episodes, and they just kept bringing me back um, and building the part. Uh, yeah. And Wait, then, so you didn't know that you were auditioning for The Mandalorian? At no. All? Wow. No, I had no Oh, you knew? Oh, okay. I didn't audition, though, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> wow, fancy. But, but you'd had some like, experience in the Star Wars universe already, anyway. Yeah, you know, I did point, a couple yeah. episodes of Clone Wars, but. Uh, yeah, this was one of those things that was a gift from the universe for me. Uh, I was, I was, <laughs> I was working on the East Coast, and it was 1 a.m. and I got this call from my agent, and uh, I was fast asleep. And I was like, "Why is he calling me so late?" I was like, "Either this is really good news, or most likely it's really bad news." I thought I was going to get fired from the show I was on. And then uh, he told me like, he's like, "Hey," uh, he was like, "I just remember blah 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 blah." Untitled John Favreau project, a blah blah blah, and I was like, you got to repeat that. I didn't understand what you just said, and so he's like, blah 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 blah, John Favreau, blah 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 blah. I was I was asleep, and then when I was like, okay, I googled it. I was like, oh, it's it's a Star Wars show for some kind of Disney streaming platform. I'm like, okay, uh, do they want me to audition for it? He's like, no, they're offering it to you. Uh, so I'm ex I don't know why, but like. Very, very lucky, uh, but I did know what it was when I was doing it. <laughs> lucky you. Uh, very lucky, yeah. <laughs> and did, I, know, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a kind of secret project and stuff anyway, but how long did you have to keep that secret? And obviously, Katie, you worked on kind of Avengers and stuff as well, like Avengers Universe. So is it the same kind of process? You can't tell anybody until you appear on screen? They're more secretive for Star Wars than Marvel, in my opinion, because I was allowed to announce that I was in Marvel, 
like a month before or something, but Star Wars, I wasn't allowed to say anything until the episode aired. And even then they were like, maybe just hold on for a second until it gets aired all over the place. And I'm like, it's, people can Google these things. <laughs> it's the worst part of it. You can't tell anybody. You're like Kristen Wiig from that Saturday Night Live sketch, where she's like, you know that what I'm talking about? You don't know that, you know that sketch? Okay. Yeah, you want to tell everybody. Uh, but you can't. It sucks, but... Yeah, we've, we've had people here before saying, like, so Ray Park was sat here going, yeah, it'd be really good if there was a Darth Maul series. And within 24 hours, he'd had a phone call from a Disney exec going, what do you mean you're telling people there's a Darth Maul series? And it got from here to there that quickly, so there are spies everywhere. Oh, right. Yeah, there's spies. If we say anything, Mickey Mouse comes out of the ceiling. You get that Dis yeah. Disney yeah. dot on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you see your laser, yeah, and they snatch us right up, and then they flash everybody, and you forget everything. And it's a whole process. I guess it's the same with the script as well. You only get certain bits at, at certain times, do you? To our detriment. Yeah, sometimes we don't even know why we're doing stuff. We only get our lines, and even if it's like seven eighths our lines, and there's one more line that's in someone else's scene, they like take it out. So, I mean, I wish we knew more, right? We more had, helpful. Yeah, in our episode, I remember they're like, "Oh, you have to come into set today for uh, for a scene," and I'm like, "I've shot all my scenes. What are you talking about?" And they're like, "Oh, you have a scene where you have to walk up some stairs," and I'm like, "I didn't know that." And I didn't know I sent you biscuits or something. There's so many things right. I had no idea that I was doing. Yeah. It doesn't sound like the easiest job in the world. Probably the most rewarding, but you know, maybe. Yeah. Okay, some of you guys must have questions, so stick your hand in there. That hand went up so quickly. It better be a good question now. So, of course, you've talked about um, Mandalorian Series 3. Um, I was just wondering what your thoughts are on. Um, of course, the spin-offs that have come out of uh, Mandalorian, like Book of Boba Fett, and of course, Ahsoka that just came out very recently, and of course, um, now of course, um, the New Republic film, which um, co-showrunner Dave Filoni is going to be directing soon. I didn't know there was a New Republic film. A New Republic spin-off? I had no idea. Is there one? Well, Book yeah. of Boba, yeah, Obi-Wan, yeah. I've been watching all of them, and I, I just, you know, I do love everything Star Wars. Uh, but for me, like, what took the, the cake for me was Andor. I know that's, it just, it just, it seemed like a little bit more geared towards adults. And it took its time with like 12 episodes and really fleshed it out. But, you know, I have fun. I watch it with my family. It's a good time, yeah. You're better than I am. I haven't watched any of them yet. I saw the first Ooh. episode, I know. <laughs> I saw the first episode of Andor, I thought it was great. I just like, I think I have, as bad as it is to say as an actor, I have like television fatigue. I've been going on hikes and traveling and stuff, and one day I'll sit down and watch everything again. I'm watching comedies right now. Yeah, less serious stuff. So were either of you Star Wars fans before you kind of got into it? <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Um, I wasn't as much, uh, I enjoyed it, but like, what made me an uber Star Wars fan, you would think it's being on the show, but it, it was more being a dad to a, a kid who fell in, like, we, I, I fell in love because he fell in love, and when I had to tell him bedtime stories, and, and, uh, and it was Star Wars themed bedtime stories, it wasn't good enough if I didn't know more about the lore, and so I really, really studied it. And I became now an Uber fan through him. And since then, he's moved on. So he just left me by myself. <laughs> left you with all the stories. <laughs> I was a big Marvel fan, so I was really excited to be a part of that universe. But I, like, my brother was a huge Star Wars fan, and it was kind of like a out of spite thing that I didn't watch it. I was like, he likes that, so I can't. Um, and. And then once I booked this, and I was like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I came, like, watching the episodes. I'm like, what is going on? What is a Mandalorian? What's, who's Boba Fett? You know, I had to, so I had to go back from the beginning and start watching everything. And now I'm, like, teetering my way through Clone Wars. And, yeah, I know. Thank you. Yes, now I'm a good fan. So, next question from you guys. Hi there. Yeah. Um, firstly, I just want to say I think you're both awesome. I love watching your characters in The Mandalorian. So my question is that 
I am like super excited every time there's a new Mandalorian season. And I was wondering, do you guys have any TV shows that you guys get like super excited every time there's a new season release that you can't wait for new episodes of? It was Game of Thrones for me. And like before that, like Naruto and like Bleach until they ruined Bleach. And uh, no. Yeah, I mean, for, I was I was huge into Game of Thrones for a while. But I tend to like those like dark dramas like Severance, uh, you know. But this whole waiting two years for a new seasons is like, I, it sucks for fans and it sucks for, I, I don't know who wins in this setup, you know? Uh, I, I don't like it. You tend to forget what you watched, you know, a season ago. But, uh, yeah, off the top of my head, I can't, I can't think. But I was, I was big on that Game of Thrones uh, uh, bandwagon when it was going. Were you both happy with the ending of Game of Thrones? Did it pan out how you thought it was going to go? Yeah. It was alright. <laughs> I didn't hate I didn't... it as much as other people did, you know? I... It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I think everyone had their own idea, didn't they? I think that's... Yeah. With any finale, everyone's got their own idea, so no finale is ever going to keep people happy. That's true, yeah. Like, I love the Sopranos finale, and some people were like, how dare you, it's terrible. I'm like, no, it's great. What happened? No one knows. It's awesome. I remember that at the time, just fade to black. What kind of finale is that? Yeah. Okay, next question. Yes, over here. Uh, hi, Katie. Hi, Ahmed. Uh, I'd like to know, um, which Star Wars character or uh, cast member would you uh, like to work with the most? Me personally, uh, the character who I would love to cross in story is uh, Palpatine. I think the whole cloning and the resurrection of, uh, you know, if they could make that work, that would be great. Is he here? The guy yeah, who he's over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't met him yet, so uh, that's that would be the character for me that I would like to cross paths with. I think it'd be really funny if, like, my character ran into someone like Darth Maul in like, you know, the Empire coffee room, like a coffee break, and it's just like, oh hey Darth, and he's like, Ugh. you know, and then we just get our coffee and we're like, big day, yeah, you know, and then and then that's it. Very anticlimactic, I think that'd be fun. Star Wars office, and then, yeah. <laughs> Next one? Over here, yeah. If you could play any other character, who would it be and why in the Star Wars universe? Who to play, you said? Uh, if, I, if I could play any other character, hands down, it would be uh, <laughs> Anakin. Um, I'd be a very weird Anakin, but uh, I, just, I just thought his storyline was the most fleshed out. Anytime you start good and then you go bad and you find yourself pulling for that character to come out, I just think it's just really powerful storytelling. I just loved his complete arc. So, yeah. Um, my character was originally named Lilith, and I started being like, who's Lilith? You know, and I, I was like hoping that there was an, a character that was named that, and there was, and it was in the same time period and everything. Um, and she is a Sith witch. She's some kind of witch character, and she has a light whip instead of a lightsaber, and I was like, that is so hot, I want to do that. So that's the character I would want to play, and then they changed the name, they're like, oh no, there's a character that's the same name, the same time period, that can't be your name. So that's how I found out I didn't get to have a light whip. I think watching the end of Ahsoka, I think they've got plans for Lilith. I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think. Damn it. Well, I don't know that officially, but yeah. Next one? Yep, yeah, just down here. Hi. Is there anyone you've met with the projects that you've worked on or doing these cons that you've met and just absolutely lost your mind? I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm thinking. I know. Uh, you know who it was? Uh, uh, Woody Harrelson uh, oh. when I was doing the, the Hunger Games. I only worked with him like a day. But I, 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 it was really hard to stay... Uh, in character, because I just, I just, I love like, you know, watching him growing up, you know, white man can't jump, uh, all that stuff, so, yeah, it is hard, but, you know, as a professional, you, you, you can, you know, you got to be able to do it, so, yeah. That was, 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 that was,
was I, for Ant Man. I got to meet Paul Rudd and Bill Murray, and that was insane. And they were both so friendly, so nice. I know the, the varying stories sometimes, but on on this set they were like super, super sweet, um, and just really funny and witty, and you know knew everybody's names, kept a light atmosphere. I, that was amazing. But on Mandalorian. Um, I was a big fan of Latif Crowder, who's the stunt double for The Mandalorian. And when I, I was on set, just walking around, and I look over, and I'm like, I grab someone, I'm like, is that Latif Crowder? And they're like, you're in a room with Giancarlo Esposito, and Carl Weathers is over here, and like, <laughs> John Favreau, and I'm like, look, it's, it's Latif. So I love martial artists. Like, any time that I get to meet a phenomenal martial artist on set, I'm just like, super happy. And on the, on, the, on the flip of that, and you don't have to name them, obviously, have there been people you've worked with that you've been, just been a little bit disappointed with? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to name names, but it is uh, heartbreaking. And it's not so much that they were unkind to me or fellow actors, but, like, it is important to treat the crew who work harder than anyone else on set with respect and dignity, and it breaks my heart. I did get yelled by a pretty big actor one time. And, and he was yelling at everybody. I won't, I'm not gonna name names, but I was with a buddy, I was like, yo, dude, if he like comes at us, dude, we're gonna show him what's up. And sure enough, it was my turn, he yelled at me, and my manhood shrunk, and I couldn't say anything. I totally froze up, because you're just like, so like, what is happening? Um, but yeah, it happens, but you know what? It doesn't happen as often as you think. I think 99% of the time, everyone's absolutely lovely to work with and everyone's doing something that they're lucky to be doing and, and, and there's, you know, passionate about, so, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, unkindness is one of the big things. Like, I've definitely worked with people that yelled at, yeah, PAs, which, I, like, they have the hardest job. They, they have to get there early. They have to, like, bring you coffee and stuff. And I know that sounds silly, but, like, they, they get treated so poorly, generally. And there are some actors that take advantage of that, but, um, yeah, people who are like screamers, who take whatever they're feeling out on everybody else this is a big thing. This guy, um, I'm kidding, no, he's the nicest, he's the nicest person. So don't name names. Yeah, but we also like sometimes, you know, people show up super drunk to set and you're like, man, that's not fun for me today. <laughs> okay, next question. Yeah, over here. Sorry, Katie, this one's for him. Um, what was it like working on The Walking Dead? And Fear the Walking Dead, were you already a fan of the original before you, you got into it? I'm sorry, what was the first part? The Fear of the Walking Dead, what was it like working on the show? And were uh, you a fan of the original before you went to it? I had seen a couple seasons of the original uh, uh, with, with a girlfriend at the time, and then we broke up, and so I just stopped watching it because it was, you know, sour, sour memories. Um, but uh, I gotta tell you, like, those shows, when they write for you, they really write for you. And, and I love that aspect of it. But physically, it's very difficult. Because they like to smog it up, and, and that's the stuff is like, you know, harmful for your lungs. And it was hot and sweaty, and you're dirty. Uh, I just remember physically like being very, very tired at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good kind of tired, and... But my, my Fear of the Walking Dead thing, I didn't like my character. And so I would go home and like scrub him off of me, like in the crying game, you know, like just, I just didn't want him on me. I didn't like living in his skin. But, um, but the people are awesome. Actors are awesome. And uh, yeah, it was a good time, yeah. You loved it? You loved the character? Oh, you loved me, but not the character, right? I was gonna kill him if, if they were gonna write, if they were gonna kill him, I was gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, I just want to say that um, that episode of 19 for you guys, you know, was one of the best ones of our season three, especially when Dr. Pershing, well, he has, has a lot of potential, like, a much more important in The Mandalorian. I just want to ask, uh, what would you, what would be your favorite world to live in, in the Star Wars universe? Because I mean, it was great to see Coruscant in that episode. So, which which Star Wars world would you like to live in, or which your favorite, or would have done like a scene in? The role or, a role or world? So world? World, sorry, planet. Which world would I like to live in? Andor? 
I love like Rogue One and Andor. I love that 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 uh, the energy of the, those projects. Um, I think it's you know a little bit like when I was watching all of them, like the character of Galen Erso really like stood out to me, especially you know knowing I was going to play Doctor Pershing. So uh, yeah, I just I just I just like that tone. I'd love to act and you know stuff like that, and I feel very lucky because. We got to do something like that in our in the episode we did together. I like the concept of Coruscant. Like if they uh, maybe had more nature, that might be my my go-to. But apparently they just have the peak of a mountain and everything else is city. Um, so. Oh, you mean like quite literally world? Like yeah, oh, okay. So <laughs> planet? Okay, yeah. Uh, totally misunderstood the question. Yeah. <laughs> but also like. Um, I don't know what the mosquito situation is uh, in Star Wars, but where the Ewoks live look really cool. Uh, but it also looked like there might be some a bug situation, you know, like tropical bugs that I would just react to. Me too, Endor, right? It's en Endor, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful planet. I mean, the older arm looks nice, but maybe not. <laughs> Next one. Where are we? Yeah, pick up someone, doesn't matter who. Yeah. I mean, that guy needs a wash, but you know. <laughs> Hello again. Um, what was my question? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so as we know, the Star Wars universe has expanded more than anyone uh, could ever have bargained with. It's just gone all sorts of different directions. But do you feel, as actors, that there's any stones left unturned that they might be able to explore? I mean, our galaxy alone is... Endless. Endless. Yeah. I'm sure they can come up with something. Yeah, there's so much story. There's so much, like, I think, like, I find when they tell stories that don't necessarily have to do with already stories that are taking place, I find those the most interesting where you can build something new. And I think, like, the possibilities are as endless as the universe. Um, yeah, I mean, like... There's not much else to say, but yeah, yeah. It can go on and on and on. Do more Christmas specials, more musicals, more... Just kidding. Have you, have you seen the Christmas special? I've heard rumors about it. Yeah, don't watch it. My, don't, don't um, watch it. my neighbors threw out the VHS, and we just were like, let's take it. You know? It's like, this will probably be worth a hundred dollars. It's not, it's not worth anything. Get, get George Lucas to sign it for you. He loves it. Yeah. I'll call George yeah, right yeah. up. Yeah, call him right up. <laughs> Next question. We've got time for a couple more. Hi. Hi. I think you both answered me marvellous. This question is for Katie, actually. I just wondered, if, what's the difference between filming for uh, the way that they're filmed? I mean, between Marvel and uh, The Mandalorian? You know, the, the way that they're filmed, is there any differences? It's pretty simple. Well, it's pretty similar and it's funny because a lot of the crew is the same a lot of like I have Peyton Reed who directed Ant-Man he directed an episode of The Mandalorian with me and um, a lot of crossover and it's all Disney now so I think that's part of the reason um, but I at least there is a lot more for Ant-Man the sets were much larger um, we just, I mean, Pinewood, we're, we're over here in Pinewood, um, well, way back over there, it's not close-ish. Um, but we had, I mean, the world that I got to explore in that was massive. And we had hundreds of extras, we had stuff exploding, fire everywhere, we had actual dirt that at first was some kind of poop or something, and then everyone came in and they're like, what's that smell? And they're like, it's the dirt you get to roll around in. So we fixed that up, whatever, but I mean, it's... I would say there's more of a difference working on, you know, something like Mandalorian and Ant-Man versus like uh, Z Nation or even the, the Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah, I did. The Walking Dead was my first gig, and we're outside in Atlanta in the heat, covered in sweat, uh, 13 hours, just swampy, swampy heat, back and forth, not a lot of cooling tents. Like it was, it was rough. It was surprisingly rough for a big show like that. Okay, so just before we finish off then, and now we're allowed to talk about it again, what are you working on next? Uh, I can't say. I, I'm working, I worked on, just before the strike, 
a really awesome show that I'm a fan of, but um, they haven't announced it yet, so I can't, I can't, I can't say. But soon. <laughs> I have a, a movie coming out next year called Love Lies Bleeding. That's uh, Kristen Stewart, Ed Harris, me. Um, and then uh, Twisters, which is apparently the sequel. They finally, I think they finally admitted it's the sweet sequel, I don't know, to the old Twister movie from uh, like the 90s, I think. But um, that'll be out the summer of next year. We still have to finish it though. We had three weeks left before the strike. <laughs> so. You'll look slightly older now, I guess. Yeah, I have more greys. Uh, one of, I mean, I'm sure one of the other actors is much buffer now. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we have run out of time, so show your appreciation once more for our Mandalorian panel. Thank you. Bye, we did Katie. Thank you, guys.